I want to talk to you about one of the most controversial ideas in all of climate change policy. An idea so divisive that countries have been arguing about it for decades. So disputed that the United States of America pushed to have the very words removed from this year's climate change report from the IPCC. I am talking about loss and damage. Let's break down that phrase, loss and damage. It's all about the impacts, the harms of climate change. Loss refers to something that you're not getting back. Oh no, I lost my phone. Whereas damage means something that can be repaired with money. Oh no, I damaged my phone screen. When it comes to climate losses, think of things like the gradual loss of our coastlines due to sea level rise, or the sudden loss of lives in extreme weather disasters. And when it comes to damages, think of farmland damaged by drought, or infrastructure torn apart by a tropical storm. Loss and damage reflects the harms that we still have to deal with, even after our work to stop climate change and to adapt to its impacts. And this is incredibly relevant today. Take the unbelievable flooding in Pakistan, which has affected tens of millions of people. Climate change likely made these extreme rains worse, and some scientists believe that extra melting of glaciers could have made the flooding even more severe. By the way, Pakistan is still very much in trouble. Fundraisers are below. And this is just one of a number of climate change related disasters that we've been faced with in 2022. And the harms are only set to get worse. Think of things like extreme weather, sea level rise, loss of glaciers and disease spread. All of these things will be exacerbated as the world continues to heat. So why is this so controversial? Well, because it's about money. It's about those that are the most responsible for climate change, opening their wallets and supporting those that are the most impacted by climate change. It's often called climate reparations, a name that gets to the very heart of the matter. You see, we are all causing climate change and we are all impacted by climate change. But there is a massive imbalance between the we's in those two sentences. And loss and damage is a way of recognizing the very real human impacts of climate change and the very real structural causes of climate change. And while there's a lot of talk about money for lower income countries to help them adapt to the impacts of climate change and transition away from fossil fuels, there's not a structure in place to support countries when they're actually facing disaster. It's as if we talked about crime like this. Give me your wallet. Oh my God, I'm being mugged. Help. Well, we are working hard to stop crime in this area. What about this crime? Wallet now. Don't worry, maybe we can help you adapt so that future muggings are less damaging. But can you help with the present mugging? <whistles> Looks like you're on your own, buddy. The controversy surrounding loss and damage runs pretty deep, and it's not just about that United States push to have the phrase removed from a key climate change report. In the last 12 months, the United States and the European Union also rejected calls for funding for loss and damage. And going back further, in the Paris Climate Agreement, the United States made sure that compensation for loss and damage was excluded. Okay, but how would loss and damage actually work? Well, unfortunately, there are lots of different answers, even around the basics. Firstly, who is a victim of climate change? In some sense, we all are, but some suffer much more than others, particularly people in poorer countries and poorer people within countries. And what about who is responsible? Now, of course, some are much more responsible than others, but how do we divide it up? 
Do we focus on the countries that are today's biggest emitters? Or do we look at the biggest emitters throughout history? Or perhaps we focus directly on fossil fuel companies. We are talking about potentially huge amounts of money. Losses and damages are expected to cost hundreds of billions of dollars a year by the end of this decade, potentially a trillion dollars a year by the middle of this century. If you compare and contrast this to the approximately zero dollars that are currently available for loss and damage, well, you start to see the problem. So what is actually happening on loss and damage? Well, in 2021, a dialogue was set up. You know that when a dialogue is considered progress, just how difficult negotiations have been. Many lower income countries are pushing for a loss and damage finance facility, and loss and damage is expected to be a major talking point at this year's climate negotiations. That's COP27 in Egypt. Look, if you find all of this confusing, well, that's because it is. I honestly find atmospheric physics so much easier to get my head around. I was only able to get to grips with this subject thanks to a few incredible write-ups in Carbon Brief. Links are in the description. The truth is that no one can agree on who should pay what to whom. There's even disagreement on what the phrase loss and damage actually means. But this confusion shouldn't take away from how incredibly important this is. Loss and damage is ultimately a question of justice. The reality is that some countries, some companies, have profited hugely off industries that have harmed disproportionately the most vulnerable people in the world. And this is a subject that is only going to get more important the hotter the world gets. Should we be stopping climate change or adapting to it? Short answer, both, obviously. Slightly longer answer, check out this video over here. Okay, until next time. Bye.